Hey friends, so FM synthesis is ubiquitous across all kinds of genres in modern music. But what if I told you that I figured out something kind of brand new in terms of sound design? Normally when you have FM synthesis, you have one oscillator, the carrier, which is modulated by another oscillator, the modulator. I've actually figured out how you can take any sample, any sample at all, it could be stereo or mono, in Ableton, and frequency modulate it. It's insane. I'm so excited. This is probably one of the coolest things that I've figured out with Ableton and sound design in a long time. Let's check it out. Okay, in this first example, this is just a pad that I recorded. Sounds like this. Now, this is nothing remarkable, we've seen this before, but if I go to the pitch oscillator page, what is this all about? Yeah, and so most people will probably get to this page and they'll turn the oscillator on and then they'll be like, wait, nothing sounds different. <laughs> well, that's because you need to turn the volume of the oscillator up. And essentially, it's not volume, it's more like modulation. But go ahead and listen to what happens here. And we can hear this really pleasing grit that's being added to the sample. But when we start to get into higher volumes... <laughs> it's like taking the red pill, right? <laughs> and in this case, I have the oscillator on a fixed frequency. And what this means is essentially it will play the same frequency no matter what note of this pad I play. And of course I can change the frequency, and when you go low enough, eventually you get down to LFO territory. <laughs> and of course you have a multiplier, and what essentially this does is that it doubles or halves the speed of the oscillator, so essentially you're changing octaves. Now, the sound design potential here is insane, okay? But in this situation, I kind of like the you know, like the, the lower amount volume, and this is just adding a little bit of grit to this sample. Like normally you would maybe reach for a redux or you'd add a noise layer or something. This is a, just yet another way to do a really fun thing with that. Now without it, with it. So we got that nice layer. Cool, so in this next example we have just a sine waveform sample, okay? This is functionally different, all right, than using a sine waveform, because take a listen to it. Right, there's, there's, there's some crud in there, right? <laughs> it's not exactly a sine waveform. There's some distortion in there, and this is gonna actually lend itself to the sound that we're trying to make here. So let's go yet again over to the pitch oscillator page, right? And take a listen to this. Now this may be a little bit closer to what you're used to hearing with FM synthesis. And, and of course the carrier is very close to just a normal oscillator sound, but because this is slightly different, we're getting these slightly different results. And I should also say that, let's take a look here at the type. So what's going on here is that we have different waveforms that you can choose, and maybe this waveform list looks a bit familiar to you. And if you use Ableton's operator, then yeah, these are the same waveforms available to you in operator. Now these waveforms are assembled by using harmonics, right? And so what's fun about this is that you can change the waveform and you get very different FM results. Let's try the uh, square wave, SW3. Let's try what happens here. And that's what you get with the low harmonic waveform. And then when we go to saw D, <laughs> we get some of those higher pitch things. And so, yeah, if you go down to sign, for example, we have a dirty sign kind of being modulated by a normal sign. So the tonal options here are just nuts. Now, when I turn this up and you take a listen to this, there's a little bit of modulation going on. What's that about? Well, if we go to the modulation page, you can see here that I have LFO2 that's modulating the volume of the oscillator. And so essentially what this is doing is it's turning up and down the modulation, okay, of the oscillator. You could think of this as like the FM index, right? So no matter where I put this, it's gonna have a bipolar effect over the modulation volume. Now finally you might be like, That's, that sounds pretty dirty. And yeah, you're right. Essentially I'm running a filter, also on the filter global page, I'm running a filter into the shaper. And this is pretty cool, so I'll turn both of these off. This is what the raw sound is. Yeah, there's a bunch of crap up in the top end, right? Especially if we were to choose a 
higher harmonic waveform. <laughs> but if we go to the filter, we can filter some of that out. Right, a little bit more pleasing. And then we can add the shaper. And the shaper is essentially the same shaper from Operator where you have four different types of clipping and then you can turn the amount up and down. And of course the soft clipping is just really pleasing. Right, awesome. So let's check out this next example. This is just a kick drum. Right, it's just a kick drum sample. Now, while this kick drum is pretty punchy, I feel like it might not cut through a mix, especially a, you know, a brighter mix or an EDM mix or something like that. So let's say I wanted more out of this. Now, one thing I could do is, of course, I could reach for an EQ, but in this situation, why not load the sample up into a sampler and then add a oscillator to it? But this time, let's use noise. So check it out. Here's without any, and I'll start to introduce the noise. The noise is the last option as an oscillator in here. And so check this out. Ooh. Now, I have the sustain turned all the way down here. If the sustain was up, you can hear how it'd be this grungy kind of kick drum sound. I mean, that's, that, that's cool. Maybe that's what you're going for. But in this situation, you also have an amplitude envelope. And so what we can do is use the ADSR here to turn down the sustain. And now we can choose how long the decay of the noise is. You know, if we want a really short click, we could do... Here's the AB, right? Or we could turn it up to get more of the effect. Get more of a thud sound, right? Now, I've left it off fixed mode, so it's following the note. As I play up the scale, you can hear it's kind of going up in pitch, but I could also fix it. So essentially the noise would sound pretty similar no matter where I play the kick drum at. And so maybe that's a desirable result that you'd want. Maybe not. I don't know. It's kind of fun. And so finally for a finishing touch here, I turned on the shaper and check it out what happens when, when you don't have the shaper on. The two sounds sound a bit disjointed. It sounds like there's noise and there's a kick drum sample as opposed to a kick drum that sounds noisy, right? <laughs> When you turn on the shaper, what this does is it kind of marries the two sounds together and you get this nice result. And of course, we're also adding those pleasing harmonics so we can hear the note of the kick drum too. So yeah, Ableton Sampler is unbelievably deep and powerful. And of course, in this short video, I can't break down every single feature that would take forever. Instead, I've actually made a sound design and synthesis online course for Ableton that you can take that goes over every single Ableton instrument in explicit detail. And you can check that out up here or in the description and comments. I'm also going to give you access to this .als file, uh, the Ableton live set, so that you can break down each one of these and kind of learn for yourself how I put these together. So if you want that, that's also down there. Cool. Let's get back to it. Okay, so in this next example, I just dragged and dropped a grand piano sample. Now, of course, this sort of sounds like a piano, but it's one sample, so, you know, Ableton's re-pitching it everywhere. And it's kind of unremarkable. But let's go ahead and look at the pitch oscillator page. If I turn up the modulation here, take a listen to this. Let's go a little bit harder. Whoa. <laughs> Just by changing the volume, you get totally different tones. And this is a really great candidate for some reverb. Let's give it a lot of reverb. So the tonal options are crazy here. And, and something we haven't talked about yet is when you have fixed mode off, we can change the harmonic relationship between the oscillator, right, and the original sample. Now, What's going on with this? Well, essentially, when you are doing FM synthesis, you're creating sidebands, right? And if the modulator is harmonically related to the carrier, you get pleasing sidebands, and they're creating uh, harmonic notes and complexity to the sound. So let's go ahead and, and change the course. So what this does is this does not go up in octaves, okay? It actually goes up in the harmonic overtone series. So take a listen to this. <laughs> so yeah, let's turn the volume down a little bit. Which again is totally functionally different than...
Amazing. Let's try a different waveform. Let's try something with, let's try a square waveform with low harmonics, maybe a square six. And we'll try a different chorus amount, maybe something like the first fifth. Let's go with the sine waveform, kind of old school. And of course, right now I have my decay up pretty high. I could use this instead to just add a bright attack to this sound. So let's turn the decay down a bit and the volume up way high. Let's try a high harmonic waveform doing this. Right, so there's a lot of potential to just transform any sound that you have into something completely different, especially with synth keys. Cool, so in this last example, we just have a pad. But in this case, I'm using the oscillator and I'm modulating its pitch using the modulation page auxiliary envelope, okay? Take a listen to what happens when I turn this thing on. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm creating kind of like a transition or a down sound by using something that is harmonic with whatever song I'm working on. So what I'll do is I'll take a sample from the song itself and then I'll put a fixed frequency oscillator on it and then I'll modulate it going down in pitch. So how this is accomplished is I'm using the auxiliary envelope here and my target is the pitch of the oscillator, right? Oscillator only pitch. Now this is the modulation amount, but I could go opposite. I could go all the way down to negative 100 and get a riser sound. But notice that the result, either way, has that actual note of the song in it. And of course I could filter this down if I wanted to, but let's go ahead and try some different waveforms out. Let's try triangle. Listen to just how changing the waveform absolutely changes the sound, right? Word, so hopefully you can see how powerful this insane oscillator FM feature is with an Ableton sampler. If you like this kind of thing, please like, comment, subscribe. Much love, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.